In this tutorial, we'll create a full screen background image slider with only HTML and CSS. Okay, so I have a simple project here, uh, just an HTML boilerplate, and I added one element to the body with a class of container. I'm linking to this style sheet. So right now it's completely empty. I'm also using live server, so whenever I save the file, it will automatically refresh the page. Okay, so we're gonna have three background images that will fade between them. So I found some images on unsplash.com. They have tons of images, and I found these three images. Let's see the third one and um, they are going to be uh, presented as a background image but we're actually just going to use the image tag here because maybe you've seen some other solutions and the other solutions they actually use the background image and they try to animate that but that's actually not a good practice because other browsers will not support that and chrome may also not uh, support that in the future so that's actually not a good solution right so this is going to be a better solution so what we're going to do is we're simply going to have three image elements right three images and i'm just gonna copy the url and just paste them right here in the source okay so i pasted the third one here as well so if i save now let's see what we get it's gonna be a big mess yeah so now we have this all these images are gonna be displayed one after another they're gonna be way too big and we also have this weird space at the edge let's start there actually so typically you want to have a so-called css reset so because the browser adds some default styling for example it adds like uh, some padding or margin to the body element that's why we have this space here and it adds it to other elements as well typically we want to start from a clean slate so a good idea is to remove all the margin all the padding and also to set the box sizing property to border box you don't really have to understand the box sizing property right now. It's actually the most difficult property in CSS. I have a separate video on that one. But if I save here, let's see what happens. Now that weird uh, white space is gone. Now the images are not sized properly. So let's just select all images. We're going to make them the height and width of their container. Right. So we want we want the images to cover the entire area here. Um, so what, what we're going to do is we're just going to say 100% of the parent element, also the height, 100% of the parent element. They're sitting in a container element here. Right. So an element with a class of container. So I'll also quickly select that. So this one should get a height of 100% of the viewport. So the viewport is the visible area of the web page. It does not include this address bar here. And then also it should get 100% uh, viewport width. Now with viewport width, it can sometimes get a bit tricky because you may have more content and so you get a scroll bar. So typically people also just use percentage here. This is actually a bit, a bit advanced. You don't have to completely understand this right now. It's not really important. Okay, so when we do this, it already looks a little bit better. But the images right now come after come one after another. So what we're going to do is we're going to use position absolute so that they're going to be on top of each other actually. With position absolute, we're also going to take it out of the normal flow. So when you do that, they will actually not take up any space anymore. So that scroll bar actually also disappears. Now we want these images to sit at zero pixels from the top and zero pixels from the left. This one actually is already sitting correctly, but I like to make it explicit when you work with position absolute. Um, it's zero pixels from the top, but the top of what exactly? Well, we'll make that the container here. So the container is going to be the reference point for that, right? So this is actually also pretty advanced. So you don't have to completely understand this right now. I mean, when you work with images and you start playing with the height and width of them, it's, it's, a, it's actually a good practice to use object fit cover. So that doesn't repeat itself and that it um, nicely uh, re re uh, retains the aspect ratio. Okay, so now we basically have those three images and they actually sit on top of each other. So um, let's see. So they actually sit on top of each other and it's actually the last one now that's being displayed, right? Because, um, well, the browser can only display one, right? So it needs to decide which one of these should be displayed now. One of the rules is simply that the one that comes later in the HTML is displayed on top. Right, so you can play around with um, the order of these to get um, the starting image. Right, I'll just leave it like this. Okay, so now how do we animate between them? We want to have like a fade uh, animation between them. So um, other solutions use background. Whoops, other solutions use background image and they try to animate the background image property. But that's actually not a good idea. So we're going to do it differently. We're going to create a set of keyframes. Right, so we're going to use a CSS animation as it's called, and I'm just going to call it fade. Right, so it's really important that you have mastered CSS as a uh, web developer. So definitely check out my professional CSS course if you want to take it to a professional level. You can find the link in the description. So we're going to have three images and we're going to use opacity in this case. Right, that's, the, that's what we're going to animate. So at the beginning, it should be opacity one. And then after a third, because we have three images, the opacity should be zero. Then after two thirds, we could do 66, 67%. The opacity should still be zero. And then at 100%, we're going to make the opacity 1. Right, so a little bit complicated here. 
but uh, you'll see that it will work. Okay, so these are the steps of an animation, right? So now we need to apply these steps to a particular element. So we're gonna select all the images here. We're gonna apply to all the images. We're gonna say, well, animation, and then it's gonna ask us which steps. Well, the fade steps, right? We call these set of keyframes fade. The entire animation will last, let's say nine seconds. The timing function should be ease in out. The default is ease, but ease in out looks a little bit better when you fade between images. And the animation should be infinite, right? So it shouldn't just stop after one go. It should it should continue repeating. And we're also gonna say alternate. So that, so that goes from one to zero again. Okay, now the trick is that each um, image should start at a slightly later time. So we're gonna give the, right? So because now they're all animating at the exact same time. But the trick is to give each uh, image a slightly later uh, starting moment. So we can select, right? So we have three images here. So we can just select them individually. We could give them classes, but let's just select them like this. So we can say the image that is um, nth of type, the first one, let's say, we can say animation delay. Well, this one should start immediately. So it has no delay, but just for completion sake, we should add that here, just for clarity. And then the other one should start after three seconds. The second one should have three seconds. And then the third image should start after six seconds. Seconds. And when you do that, it should work. So let's see what happens after three seconds or so. It should, it should start animating. And it actually takes a bit longer than that. Um, but you can see it's nicely animating, fading between the images now, right? And you can play around with these numbers. It also depends on how many images you have. If you have four images, right? This all should be zero, 25%, 50, 75%. All should, that should all be zero. And then 100% should be one again, right? And 0% should also be one. And then here, probably best to... Um, to have something like zero delay, um, 2.5 second delay, five second delay, 7.5 second delay, and then maybe 10 seconds in total, right? So depends a little bit on how many images you have. Um, but this is the result that we have so far. Now, typically you're gonna have some content on top of this, right? So maybe you're gonna have some text. Now, when you work with text and images, usually you wanna, you wanna make the images a little bit darker so that the text is easier to read. So we can also add an overlay here. And let's see, I'll actually do that at the start here. So it's just going to be an empty div. I'm just going to give it a class of overlay. And actually, let me select that here on top. So we can just say overlay. And this is just going to be a black color, right? Actually, with some opacity. So we can say black color with, let's say, 50% opacity, 100% of the parent element, which is that container. Now, it shouldn't take up any space. So we're going to use position absolute here to take it out of the normal flow. It's also going to be... Uh, zero pixels from the top and left. And now we don't see it because it's actually displayed below the images. So we can just increase the, we can just increase the, the, the Z index. So if we do that, now it's on top and then it shines through a little bit because it has 50% it has opacity. It's actually a bit dark for my taste. So we could make it slightly lighter here. Um, and now we could add some text on top of this, right? So we could also center it, whatever the content may be. Maybe you have buttons or whatever. Just as a quick example, we can also add some content. I'm just going to add like a, let's say a heading. I'll give it a class of heading. Welcome to my site, right? And I will select it here at the, at the bottom heading. I'll give it a pretty big font size and a color of white. It's probably displayed below everything right now. So this is actually pretty interesting. It has to do with the stacking context because there are certain rules like the order in which um, the, the HTML is ordered, the Z index here, and and also if the if the element has a position property. So those are all factors in um, considering which the, the browser will consider um, in the decision to display what element on top. So here the heading is doesn't have the position property set. So I'm just going to set it to relative just to set the position property. And when we do that, it actually is the place displayed on top of the images, but below the overlay. So then here, we're going to add a Z index that is going to be bigger than the overlay. So then it's sitting on top of the overlay. Now it's a little bit complicated there. Now we want to center it. And we can do that very easily with Flexbox. So this container, right? So we have the container here. That's the parent element of this heading. So we can just say display flex and then justify content center to center it horizontally and align items center to center it vertically. And when you do that, we have the content right here in the center. Of course, you can add other things like more tags or a button, right? The principles, and the, the, the way of doing that remains the same. 
And now we have a very nice background image slider, nicely sliding or fading between the images. And it's actually a clean solution because it will also work in, all the, in other browsers like Firefox and Safari. By the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also, check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there, we will build some beautiful real-world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you want to be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.